Welcome back, y'all. Happy Wednesday to you. This is the Blue Tier Breakdown, and I'm your host, Bull. Today, I want to give you four changes that I think Tennessee needs to make coming out of this bye week. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Later on tonight, Timmy G and I will be going live at probably about 7.45 p.m. Eastern time for the midweek chat, but we'll let you know for sure here on the channel in just a few. We hope that y'all can all join us. There's several things that we could talk about. The whole team from top to bottom, Kentucky, because I've been watching film on them, and then what teams does Tennessee want to win or lose this weekend to help with our playoff host. But the conversation can go in a million different directions. That's all based off of y'all because we're just going to be focusing on the chat. So please make sure that you get there early. Again, we will let you know what time for sure on the channel. All right, y'all, let's focus on what we've learned about this Tennessee team up to this point in the season. Number one, the defense is elite on all three levels. Doing a great job getting pressure on quarterbacks. The sack totals are starting to rack up. And James Pierce is starting to find his groove. We're doing a phenomenal job stopping that run. One of the best in the entire country. And I was impressed with our young linebacking core last weekend versus a very good Alabama offense. Some people are trying to downplay Alabama's offense. But even after the game where we held them to 17 points, they're still averaging putting up 38 points per game. So doing a great job there. And then two, with the third level, it was several people's question about this defense and really this entire team heading into the season, but they've proven that they're not just good in coverage, but also in run support, do a beautiful job of just being physical, playing with proper leverage, getting into their run fits, all that good stuff. So this defense from top to bottom is deep. We're rotating in. A lot of guys were playing with that swag. I have nothing that I need to change about this defense outside of just getting better week to week like we always have to, because if you're not getting better, then you're getting worse. But outside of that, with the offense, man, our running game is number one in the SEC, which is spectacular. And then outside of that, we're like number five or number six nationally. And I mean, all those teams are kind of like lower tier. They don't really play up against anybody. I mean, we got guys like Boise State, who doesn't really play anybody. What they played Oregon. I don't know who else they played. Uh, and I think it's UNLV or somebody like. So the whole point is this. Tennessee can do everything that you want for a team to do to make a deep playoff run. We can run the football at a very high clip, almost at will. We can stop the run, and we play good defense from top to bottom. All we need to do now is just get that vertical passing game picked up, and we know that it's going to get there because that's what this offense does. We're starting to get closer. We've got a quarterback that can make all the throws. He can make all the plays with his legs, with his arm, and we saw it in the second half of that Alabama game that he's starting to play with some confidence. So I think that we'll be fine for the most part. But everything that I'll be touching on today has to do with Tennessee's offense. Well, actually, outside of this first one, because this first one is for the entire team. So the first one, okay, is going to be that we need to come out of this by focus. We need to go into it focused and then come out maybe even more focused because we didn't do it last time versus Arkansas. Now, that game was in Fayetteville. This one's going to be at home, but it doesn't matter. Okay, we have got to take Kentucky seriously, even though I don't think Kentucky is as dangerous of a team as Arkansas was, especially for us but they can still pose some problems, all right? So if Tennessee just takes care of business coming up next weekend, then all of a sudden, man, the playoff picture brightens up significantly. Second change that I'm looking for coming out of this buy is going to be moving Mike Matthews from the outside to the slot. Now, he has played both. Actually, his only two catches this whole season came from when he was playing in the slot, but he's played more on the outside. I'm going to pull this up for y'all real quick. These are the seven wide receivers that rotate in the most so far this season. They're ranked in order from the fastest to the slowest. Down at the bottom, we've got Mike Matthews. And this is not true to his actual speed. I think that the reason for this is he's been dealing with his hamstring. He's not playing at 100%. So for everyone that's been asking, where's Mike Matthews been? I think that that's the first part of why he hasn't been playing as much or why he hasn't been getting as many targets. The second part of it is playing on the outside. Cornerbacks are coming up and pressing Mike Matthews and they're getting the better of him, okay? He doesn't have that two-way go like he would in the slot so they're able to kind of push him out of bounds now i have seen some times where he was able to beat that press and he actually stems and gets on top uh you know with the fade route and he's actually wide open but nico ends up throwing it to somebody else because the other person was also wide open the whole point right there is mike matthews still runs really good routes he can still make the catches he still plays with good speed he's just a baller he's just a dog we got to utilize him more and it would help him if we put him in the slot where he's got that two-way go. It's not as easy for the secondary to come down and press him and be physical with him. Something else that we could do if we want to keep him on the outside is motion him around more. Let him play off of the line of scrimmage so that they can't get hands on him as much because once he gets off of the line of scrimmage, he is very, very dangerous. But it's just, it's very similar to what we saw with Dante Thornton, right, uh, last season. 
he was playing out of position and slot, then he moves to the outside, he looks a whole lot more comfortable. Exact same thing with Mike Matthews. He's been playing on the outside, which at this point is more out of position for him than the slot is. I think the slot's going to be a lot more natural for him, and we got to get him going because I can tell that he's visibly frustrated. We don't want him transferring out. Plus, Squirrel's kind of banged up, uh, so he hasn't really been able to produce as much. Nimrod hasn't really done much for us. And if you go back to 2022, the most productive part of our offense, uh, just as far as the wide receivers go anyway, was with our slot, right? Jalen Hyatt, he had all those touchdown catches. So whenever people looked at this offense, they said, well, the slot is who, is who you need to stop. But this season, it's flipped. The outside has been a lot more productive than the slot. Once we bring the slot back into play with a guy like Mike Matthews, who hopefully he's going to be a lot more healthy, uh, you know, coming out of this bye week, once we can get more explosive there, the, the vertical passing game is going to come back. So I think that we have got to find a way to get it going. And the first way to do it is going to be by getting Mike Matthews a lot more slot reps and targets. Number three for me uh, is going to be to use Cam Seldon a lot more. Now, we all know that D. Samp is the best running back probably, or maybe, in the whole country. It just really all depends on how you look at it. I think he's definitely number one in the SEC, but he's top three nationally. I don't think that there's much debate about that. He gets 20-something carries per game. I don't know the exact number. I would say it's probably about 23, 24, something like that. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily too many. Not at this point. But if we want to make it to the playoffs, if we want to make that run, we're going to need decent. We're going to need him healthy. We're going to need him with less miles on those tires. So let's rotate in some more guys. We need to be a lot more intentional with getting Cam Seldon reps. He's only got, I think, eight rushes for 48 yards all season. He's averaging six yards per carry, which is good. He can get it done from that perspective, but he needs a lot more, okay? I think Bishop needs a few more. If it was me, I would say, look, Cam's going to get at least five touches every single game. We got to start to do that because he's another one that we don't want transferring out. And with him being a bigger body, six foot two, about 230 pounds, four, 240, this is a guy that whenever teams start to stack that box, which is, I promise you, that's coming up here shortly. We need some bigger guys that can kind of run through that contact and maintain getting four yards per carry. Cam Seldon can do that, but he's also versatile enough that he can actually go out of the backfield, have an empty set, and line up like a wide receiver, run the entire route tree. He has really good hands. So that would just present some more problems to the defenses that we're facing. But Cam Seldon needs to get a lot more touches. Fourth change that I would love to see coming out of this bye is to throw the football to the running backs out of the backfield more. Now, this is mostly on Nico because we tried to do it within the play calls, but Nico hasn't hit him yet. So if you look at Tennessee's offensive scheme, we want to throw the football deep, and everybody knows that. So on defense, they're playing deeper coverages. What that means is if we have wide receivers on one side and everyone goes deep, well, there's nobody on that side for the defense that's playing underneath stuff most of the time. And we've had running backs that go on out to the flats, which is the area that I'm talking about. And Nico just doesn't see him. It's happened a few times. But if we do that, okay, if we just kind of go through our reads, right? Looking deep. All right, one, two, it's not there. Dump it off to the flats. That's 20 to 30 yards that our very explosive running backs have to play with. That's huge. And I think that we've got to start to implement that more, especially once the vertical game gets going, that's going to be there all day. And if teams want to come up and try to stop that, all of a sudden the vertical game is back in play. So now we're talking about a team that is complete, that can put stress on defenses, on offenses in multiple different ways. I would love to see Tennessee implement all these changes, but I would also love to hear y'all's thoughts down in the comments section. And thank you for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. We hope to see y'all tonight at probably about 745. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Peace.